Hello, all. Now, today I'm going to do something I've been, an idea I've been kicking around for a long time now. Um, and the fact that I've been addicted to this top five channel on YouTube lately, watching like stuff about like sharks and stuff, and, like deep sea and stuff, like like countdown and stuff like that, kind of giving me the extra motivation that I feel like I needed to try this again and uh, see what we can, you know, see what we can get out of it. And we'll go from there. And back you off just a little bit. So you can see the full screen. I believe you can. Yep. All right. Good. You look nice and centered. So basically, I made this uh, slideshow. I've been thinking lately, like, a lot actually about, like, what some of the top, you know, most wanted units are, you know. And number one is going to come as no surprise. I was going to start with number one, but now you're going to notice something more. But I started from the back instead. We're working our way up. It's going to take a little bit to get through it. It took me a long time to make it. So I definitely would appreciate your feedback at the end. Uh -huh. All right, let's get this in uh, full screen mode. Yeah. I'm going to try not to lean on the uh, screen because I want to, you know, mess it up. But yeah, anyway, this basically sums it up. What this is, is this has been what I've been noticing. I've been noticing, this is basically based on what people are talking about, what people are posting on, um, commenting on my YouTube channel, commenting on the uh, AC Collectors group on Facebook, um, you know, what gets the most views, what people talk about the most. When people, when people write about what their most wanted units are, they ask, you know, they ask about these and now I started this. You're gonna notice something right away on the first slide. That's gonna be. It's probably gonna make some of you laugh, and it's probably gonna drive some of you OCD guys crazy. Because honestly, if I was watching this, it would probably drive me a little bit crazy too. But at the end of the day, it really don't matter uh, because I for for you OCD guys, I compensated for something, and you're not gonna re you're not gonna be able to understand why right away. But when you get to that point, you'll understand why the one is in a league of its own. So anyway, I'm sure you're tired of hearing me ramble on. Let's get with it. Especially as we have 97 slides to get through. <laughs> Number six on a top five countdown. All right, you like that? The Emerson Quiet Cool Compact Series, AKA the small chassis. Now, this is kind of a uh, broad term because there's so many different, you know, styles. Not so much with the, the front grille. The front grille is pretty much going to be the same. But you get the you get the gist of it. Hoping the picture quality looks good for you guys. And that's the one you guys are all used to. I'm going to see if I can zoom in here without messing this up. That we can see the uh, control panel and everything. Actually working pretty good. That's the one everybody wants. When we call it, when we when we say the top of the line small EQK, that's what we're all referring to. And it is a great unit. I mean, obviously the ones in the reciprocating compressors are more sought after, but most people don't. I shouldn't say most. A lot of you guys don't really seem to care if it has a recip or a rotary in this case, which is good because the only way you're going to know is when you go to pick it up, you feel how heavy or light it is. But either way, the rotaries they use in these units are very high quality. So either way, you got yourself a solid, but very quiet runner on quiet speed, of course, and a very powerful unit that'll blow temps way under what you would expect. And they are built awesome. The only thing I recommend doing, obviously, and this is true for any vintage unit, is drain hole mod. Look at that. That, for, that is so simple, but yet, one of the best EO logos ever of all time, in my opinion, of course. And I don't think I'll find too many people that disagree with that, because the EQK badge is awesome. Especially when it's uh, in mint condition like that, which is kind of hard to come by anymore, but they're still around yet. I got lucky, I got, uh, I got mine, I pulled off a Dynamic series that was installed hanging out into a garage. And like mine now, it's installed over into a breezeway, so you get the same effect. 
Now, for some reason, people like the uh, seem to like the compact, the small compact series better. Me personally, I'm a dynamic series guy, and I've had them both. I mean, they're both childhood units. My grandfather had that exact unit, the one I used for the top of the line photo in his bedroom. But me, when I was a kid living in Levittown, this was what we, what we had in the living room. So I figured I'd just show it quick. I'm not gonna sit there and go on about because this technically isn't isn't part of the countdown, but I threw it in there anyway, just because. Look at it. Why wouldn't I? May have to come to AHs primarily. Uh, the older models before they were called a Dynamic Series, back when they still had the uh, when they were made by Emerson Radio. A lot of those, uh, from the chassis designs I've seen on Ken Horan's page, they are. Uh, comes a B series compressors. Like I said, most of these photos are mine. However, I did borrow some of you guys' and if I see something like that, I'll try to quote you along the way. Or at least credit you. I really don't think anyone really cares though to be completely honest with you because we're all we're all in this together. Number five. Real number five. So here's cold spot medium chassis. Now the funny thing about these is that I I use this picture because that's the one I like, the one with the black the black trim. I think that looks awesome. With the pull down front. Now ironically enough, a lot of you guys there's a couple variations here. First off, the ones with the pull down front and the embossed logos. That's all I care about. Pull down front, embossed logo. Now, and I like the uh, one with the six vents on the back, which I'll show you, which you'll see in the next picture. Ironically enough, a lot of you guys don't seem to care as long as it's a medium chassis. You don't care if it's a base model with or without the six vents on the back. And you just don't seem to care if it's a Sears Cold Spot sticker, which is shortly before Cantmore took over, by the way. I'll let you know that. Um, but a lot of you just don't seem to care if it has the embossed logo or what front grille it has as long as it's a medium chassis Sears Cold Spot. But in any event, the build quality is the same. These units are amazing. Looks wise and build quality, no matter what, no matter what chassis you have or what design you have. And I really like the large and small chassis too, even though the small chassis is fixed. I'm not going to get into that, but the large chassis is awesome too. That's in a league of its own too, and you'll know when the second you see it. That's what the back of them looks like. Notice you can if you look in, you can see the uh, embossed logo down at the bottom. The uh, same unit base. That's what the uh, that's what the base model grill looks like. Like I said, they look nice regardless. You can't really go wrong. Although the pull down fronts do a lot more for noise dampening, but these really ain't loud units to begin with. At least it's, at least the lower BTU models. Now the small BTU model this one has a Tecumseh pancake compressor or AU compressor. The larger ones have the B series. Some of them may have AJs. I'm not sure. Actually, that one does. That one right there. That's the uh, medium chassis, but base model. You can see it still has the uh, cold spot logo embossed in the back, but no six vent or rear vents, just bare condenser coils. And actually, if you look down here, you can actually see the grill to it. They have the egg rate grills, not the pull down fronts. And that one there actually has a uh, Tecumseh AJ compressor. There's another one with the pull down front, but a late 60s model. It may still have the embossed logo, but it may have the Sears Cold Spot sticker. It's hit or miss with that with these at the last few years there. But these ones have the uh, door there for the control panel, but the pull down front is the same. Well, different design, but same concept. That's the chassis design. It actually has the uh, pancake compressor in it. That's actually my Sears Cold Spot when I was restoring it, when I had it taken apart. I was trying to find a better picture with everything there, but I didn't have it. So, but yeah, if you look right here, pancake compressor and that piece of crap freaking inside out Delco fan motor that I should have changed out but didn't have the money didn't have the extra uh, 150 bucks around the time for a fan motor so that'll be one of the things I'll worry about when it fails that's my only bitch about the Sears units is those freaking stupid ass Delco fan motors there are some people that swear by them and say they're not that bad me I think they kind of suck number four the GE dual thrust. Now, this is such an interesting unit here because no one really knows anything about them because first off, there's only one guy I know that has them. 
and he's using it as a, uh, I believe he's, he has a couple of, he's using one as a coffee table or something like that, if I remember reading correctly. Um, but no one's seen, and the people that have them won't take them apart and show chassis photos. I am dying to know what these chassis looks like. What the hell does this thing look like inside? Why is it called a dual thrust? I've heard that there's, that there's, uh, I've heard rumors that there's three fan motors, one for the uh, condenser coil in the back, which is a huge, huge exposed fan blade, which I will show you in the next slide. I've also heard a rumor that there's two fan motors, but two centrifugal blowers with a pulley on there that's lever activated to make it dual thrust. And I've also heard it's just simply two fan motors that it's called a dual thrust solely for the sole purpose of divides the vents and two in one side, and there's nothing special about it, but either way, the inside is not the part that sells it for me. You see this office in this one motion picture here it has a G dual thrust in the background. You can see it looks like it just has three knobs, similar to a large chassis comforter. Look at that. That's one of the most badass interviews ever. The only one unit that can, the only king size unit that competes with that, in my opinion, is that 1962 era Amana with the uh, eight sets of louvers in the back, you know, along the cross and four going down, and the uh, original carrier super weather maker. But I think that takes the cake. That's awesome. Here's another one. First one was in Philly, that one's in Tamaqua. Right on, right on the back side of 209 in the alleyway. And look at this, if you look here, has all three variations present. Now it's a shame these are mostly just the carcasses. That one there, some of these in the back look like they still have the chassis in there. But these are all either, yeah, they're empty it looks like. That one has a modern, looks like an LG in it. Piece of crap. These are all blank, have nothing in them. And some of these back here look like they might have the chassis. Now, you notice all three variations are present. Logo on the left, logo on the right. No logo, but I think they had a little, like embossed little tag on the very top here, if I recall correctly. Like right up here. I've seen pictures of them, one that has that. If someone has them, but I, really, I was trying to avoid using other people's photos if I can. I know some people get butt hurt about it. And I'm just trying to avoid the freaking, hey, you used my picture. And I threw this one on here too. Because it's not a dual thrust, but along with the dual thrust, a lot of people seem to go gung ho about these slumber lines. And they're cool looking, especially the control panel is pretty neat. But I don't really get the hype behind them. Now, notice these are not my top five. These are the top five or the top most sought after units. That was actually one of our stores. It is, they were nice looking units. I just don't get how these beat some of the other ones. I'm not saying, I'm not gonna sit here and knock these. These things are awesome, but like I said, I wouldn't say they'd make my top 10. Top 20 maybe, I don't know. Like I said, the problem with guys like me, guys like KB, and we just have so many uh, units that, so many cool units that we acquire over the years. That's like a lot of the, uh, a lot of the other ones really don't interest us much anymore. Number three. Anyone want to guess what this one could be? Philco Ford and the Noiseless series. People go gung ho over these noiselesses, and I completely understand why. I mean, look at the thing. The thing is awesome. Absolutely awesome. That model has air scan. That's the back. Look at the back of it, too. Like I said, dude, um, you're never gonna forget seeing one. They're very distinguishable. You, and you're gonna know, when you see it, you're gonna know. You know exactly what it is the second you lay your eyes on it. They're very distinct look. There it is with its uh, factory brackets. That's actually the same one that was before I rescued it out of that building. That was actually an uh, AC fan came down and met me up, met up with me for that one. It almost went down too, it almost didn't make it. That's 
earlier model noiseless. Notice it has the uh, two drain dips down here. These are going to be the older style, which unfortunately I don't think I uh, had a picture ready to go. These ones will either have, and you're going to see it in the one um, on the Space Saver model, which I'm going to cover next. This is a noiseless series. I cover the Superpower models and the Space Saver models in this slide because they both fall into the same category. People seem to like them both equally. So I included both series as part of it because they are both noiseless units. Like I said, this ain't the Superpower number at number three. This is a noiseless series in general at number three. That could have a front grille. Oh, and there's the uh, chassis designed for it. That's the comes to B series compressor. I tried to get one, get a find an old picture of mine after I restored it, but I couldn't. I have the one from before. This, this picture was taken in like 2012 on my one of my old phones. But in any event, it gets the uh, gets the idea across. Like I said, it seems most of my uh, most of my work is videos, not pictures anymore. Videos are so much easier, but the only time the videos screw me is when I go to make something like this. Pictures are by far the better way to go. I'm actually not sure whose picture this is. I think I, got, I think I got this off of Flickr. But now this is before it was Ford, but it's still a Philco Noisa series. Now that one with the, that red uh, Superpower model, well, this is a Space Saver. The Space Saver and Superpower, well, this, the uh, Space Savers are a little bit smaller. But the, the uh, their mirror images. So instead of having the controls over here, it's over here. And instead of having the discharge here, it's over here on the superpower. The Philco units before Ford took over were all round like so. When uh, Ford took over, they were square. And you'll see the back of it. That one there looks like has a. Uh, that looks like a pancake. I can't really tell for sure though. But yeah, you see even the. Um, the rear louvers are reversed too. The, the uh, condenser and the louvers are reversed. Like I said, Superpower and uh, Space Saver is mirror imaging of each other, but part of the, uh, the uh, same exact series of units. That one there has an AJ. Now most of these have a pancake compressor. I'm trying to remember what my, what my uh, Space Saver model has. Now, another thing that I should have mentioned before when the front grills are there, both grills, like you know, hey, the, like the like mine noise. This is the Mediterranean brown design with air scan, and that one was kind of like just a basic model with the two round, uh, two round uh, weather wheel type vents. Both styles exist on both series of units. It just so happened that that space saver happened to have an older grill, and my superpower happened to have the newer grill. But yeah, they're, they can both be found on most of them. Now that one there has an AJ. Most of them that I've seen have pancakes. That I've seen. Number two. Now, this is where you guys are gonna understand why I had a, a six. I had my top five count then went to six. I know a lot of people are gonna be like, "Oh man, this ain't any. This ain't. This ain't a countdown because like this really doesn't pertain to anything in particular, but it pertains more to an era." And I'm gonna show you next. Any guess what? Give you a couple of seconds to think about it, and it's not going to come. A come it's not, it shouldn't really come as too big of a surprise to you that this is actually on there. Like, like I have written here, it's a category so broad that although not a brand name or series or model specific, I feel like it's definitely like I like I say here, a hundred percent worthy. Of its own position in town, because everybody talks about them. The 1950s era units, and of course, units that are you know pre 1950s, which there's only one that we know about that's pre 1950s. Look at that. That's one of the ones at the top of my one list. That's a 1955 through 1956 era feathers, uh, feathers, <laughs> feathers. <laughs> Fetters Weather Bureau. And that's the outside of one. Awesome looking in it. And I love how the 50s units had like the round, the round it is. Like I said, you can almost always tell a 50s era unit when you see one. There's another one but a larger BTU with the four, uh, four sets of diffuser vents. The smaller ones actually have two sets of vents with and a blanked outside. That's the one I have. 
and of course the, the uh the Compsa S series compressor which while we're talking about the 50 actually yeah, yeah it's actually written on that slide right there too I'm not even reading that honestly <laughs> most of the time sometimes I glance up at it that's more or less for you guys the S series compressor is by far the most common compressor in the 1950s most of them either have the S or the B series that's pretty much what you're going to get in that era and once the 60s came along that's when you got like the um you got the Pancake, you got the AJ. I think the AH was 70s, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong, so don't quote me on that for good. And of course, General Electric in the 60s used their own uh, rotary compressors, which are very, very good compressors, mind you. Just a little bit noisy sometimes. And one day I'm gonna do a video on my top five favorite compressors too. That'll actually be a top five though, and that'll actually be my personal choices, so it'll be a little bit different. We have, oh, and also the um, Carrier and the Philco Yorks all had uh, those had different style compressors, which you'll see you'll see them later on in this series of slides. There's my '53 what Feathers uh, Feathers Weather Bureau before we uh, me and Garrett pulled it out of the old Edgehill Motel in Virginia. That's the outside of one. Neat looking units again. It, it screams 1950s. Just look at it, you can tell. Like I said, nine times out of ten, you can tell a 50s unit when you see it. One of the ones that I'm trying to find, I've been trying to, I've been hunting one of these babies down for years, and every one I've ever known about, they're all gone, they've all disappeared. That right there is a 1956 carrier, large chassis. KB actually has a small chassis version to it. I'm looking for the big one. The control panels on them are cool. I just couldn't find a picture of one. There it is again. Again, look at it. You have, like I said, they do have side vents. Big carrier logo on the uh, blanked out part on the right side of the compensator. All around, it's a neat looking unit. Look at that one. That was removed back in 2014 or 2015, unfortunately, but that was on right right along Route 13 in Levittown, like right by Edgeley. I've been looking at that thing since I was a little kid, always curious, and I don't think it was always in that bad a condition, when, it, especially like in like around like the early 90s, but it was always rusted pretty pretty good. It's not, that condenser rot and shit wasn't there toward, you know, that's all like post-1995 to 2014 when it was killed. I really do want to find one. There's one in Steve's Pizzeria in downtown Pottsville in 2005 when I moved here. And there's also the one right on Market Street on 209, right across from the Wells Fargo building, in a window, mind you. That's gone now, too, unfortunately. Again, 1956 Carrier. Ah, the mid-50s Quiet Heat era Emerson, before it was Quiet Cool and before it was Emerson Radio. Quiet Heat era. Look at the back. I think, I think this movie was uh, seven year rich, I think. Look at that freaking thing. That is awesome. Ain't it though? Like I said, it's, it's no wonder that the 1950s units, I think they deserve their own spot. And everybody talks about them and everybody wants one. And the ironic thing about the 50s units is most people don't give a rat's ass what one they get as long as they get a 1950s era unit. And they are rare. They are rare, they're very rare. Although I must say, it's kind of strange how many 1953 and 1954 Fedders uh, weather VRs have been popping up lately over the last two years. Pretty cool though. 1953 Carrier Silhouette Series. Now, you would think that the air would suck in through the bottom below and blow out the top, but it doesn't. It sucks in one side and blows out the other. Now, if I ever get around to restoring this and using it, I'm gonna freaking uh, do a uh, do a louver modification to make it so it sucks in the bottom and blows out the top. That's just dumb. I think it is. There's the outside of one. Now, this is a large chassis version. The small chassis version has the condenser coils going all the way across and uses a double pass. However, the large chassis has deeper set of coils, but has a uh, has a screen here on the right hand side to suck it through and that's where your free that's where your I think it's a the semi harmonic or harmonic anyway carrier had their own compressors. I think they're I think they're uh, harmonic. They can be taken apart with getting the gaskets and all that. 
It's a really neat look, and I'll show you the chassis photo in there. This one's in. Uh, this one's still there. It's, it's in Third uh, Street, Pottsville, downtown. Really bad neighborhood. <laughs> That's a small chassis. This is the one I have. Has utilized one fan motor, as you can see, and the harmonic compressor. I think it's harmonic. It doesn't tell you. This is actually from Ken Horan's page. So Ken, I thank you for that. For putting this up there. Check it out. Air conditioner man at, uh, at uh, tumblr.com. Great site. It has a uh, just a vast amount of information and pictures on there for everybody to see. Highly recommend checking it out. Now, the large chassis, which is the one I actually have the picture of that's installed. Check this out. This is the one I want. This one here might actually have it set up different. It has, utilizes two fan motors, one for the uh, condenser, but look at the evaporator one. It aims up, so I wonder if this one here doesn't blow it out the top and suck in through the bottom, because it looks like it would, unless it just, I don't know, it's, it's hard to say. I hope that's how it works, though. I'm, trying, I'm gonna leave some notes about it and see if I can get it, because that thing is badass looking. But again, same compressor, their own, their own style. That chassis design is freaking awesome. Nineteen fifty-two Philco KB actually has this one now, and that, as you can see right here, if you look close, I don't know if you can, I know how good you can see it or not. But that has the uh, the round York compressor, and uh, when I get to the other unit, there's actually a there's actually a chassis photo that shows it a little bit better. You'll probably get a better view of it. It's an early fifties model. This one I got off of, that's uh, a screenshot. I think I got it off Google somewhere. I don't really know who the credit to because I don't know who took it. I have it now. Anyway, notice the uh, embossed Silco logo on that. It's pretty cool. Hoping this picture's working out. I have a kind of a cherry rig going on. This one here, uh, Ken Horan actually identified for me. This one here is on Ashland, PA, right off of the main drag. You can see it from the main drag going through town. I'd like to try to snag that one of these days. There's also a 60s era Whirlpool uh, next to it, too. Uh, this, is one of the, this is one of the ones that has the most views on my account. It's my first unit I ever um, put on my YouTube channel when I first started out. And it's also my first 50s unit. Unfortunately, the problem just started recently with it. The compressor kicks off on thermal overload after only running for a few seconds. I know Dave, the video that me and Dave made, I don't know if Dave, if you put it up on your channel or not yet, but um, yeah, I gotta get it probably, I'm sure it just needs a new, uh, a new overload for it. And of course, that's also, you'll see the compressor in there. It is the uh, Thompson S series. I notice how much bigger it is though. It's a, uh, so that's actually, look at the tag, it's a uh, three-quarter horsepower to come to S. Most of them are half. But I still think this unit's only uh, 6,000 feet to use. I don't see it being 9,000. Well, maybe it is. I don't know, but the airflow on it kind of sucks. It does blow cold, though. It's not very strong. Probably worked fine for a bedroom. That's, that's the 55G before I pulled it out. That's in uh, Mike's, I think it's called Mark's, or Mike's down in Ann Street, in between Pottsville and St. Clair. Right across from Reading Stove Works. There it is. Now the larger versions, like the 220 miles of higher BTU ones, had a B series, like KB's has. This one's mine. This one here, you can, as you can see, has an S series compressor. It's a rather large S series compressor at that. Like I said, Mugwomp, that's the uh, nickname for these beasts. It kind of fits it. This is pre-Mugwomp. This is a 1954 model. This is, I, this is, I got this off some kind of page uh, years ago. This is mounted in a uh, transom in the back of a restaurant in California somewhere. 1954 General Electric model. The 55 is a lot nicer, but I think it's still pretty cool looking. 
And also, I, th I believe, uh, Ken Horan, maybe if you're out there yet, uh, maybe you can confirm this for me, but I believe the outside of these looks like the mug one. The 55 version. Ah! Van Berg HVAC. Now, this is his. You want to check his YouTube channel out, too. He actually has a, um, a an actual video of this, and the startup sound on it is amazing. Really cool unit. I'm actually really jealous. I am really kind of upset, too, that I couldn't be at the first air conditioner meet this year because he had this unit there starting up where everybody could see it. Uh, Will the Trill actually has a uh, video up of that meet, which I highly recommend checking out. It's over an hour long, and that, there's actually two. There's actually two of them, and he has this high-tech camera with uh, three-dimensional audio. The sound quality is amazing. It actually, sounds really good for my JBLL 100s where I live. So it, they, the 3D imaging is real, like an actual real, or a real good st quality stereo recording, and you can actually you actually feel like you're there when you're watching it. Amazing. Yeah, anyway, Van, this is a uh, Van Berg HVAC unit, and uh, I think he has a video up on his channel, and if not, Will the Trill on his uh, second annual AC meet video with 3D audio, it's featured in there, and it does have a Tecumseh S-series compressor with an amazing startup sound. Wish I had a number to tell me how far I am in here. This is one I got off of, offline, I think it was Google. This is a international harvester air conditioner from the early 1950s. And I could help with notice it actually does look similar to a 1956 carrier, but there are differences. I don't think this one has side vents, and the lid doesn't, you can tell the lid doesn't unscrew and come off from the top. And it little, has a little IH logo right here, where you can see it. Notice the uh, Tecumseh S series compressor. That's on the uh, different slide out chassis, which I actually do have a picture of one. Thank you to Rick. I'm not going to call your last name. I'm just going to call you Rick S. That there is, I believe, it's Rick S's unit. It's a pretty basic. It looks, it looks like it sucks air in through the bottom, just blows it out through these two round vents here. There was a little International Harvester logo right there. I think there's one more which shows you the back of it when it's in the casement. Yep. It's a neat look, and I, I found one of these in Philadelphia on the uh, Street View. I don't know if it's still there or not. I'd have to look through my old Flickr photos and see if I can find it and see if there's an updated Street View of it. But it'd be cool to have one of these, although I would not recommend going in that section of Philadelphia where that thing was. Let's see. Yep, there it is again. Uh, this is Rick's again. Comes a series compressor. As I said, it's by far the most common compressor of that era. Nineteen fifty-seven generally electric thin line. In this era, these would either had the Tecumseh S series compressor, or the larger larger BTU on two hundred and twenty would have the Tecumseh. B series compressor. The 60s ones could have uh, either Pancake, some of them could have the AJ, I believe. There's all different. Once you get in the 1960s, this style of unit, there could be multiple different, you know, guts on the inside. That's what they look like. They're really neat. It's a shame they're not slide off chassis. That is the one thing that I fault them for on that. You can see the inside of it a little bit. I should have tried to get a better picture, but... Like I said, that's an early one, 1957. I bet you it has, I bet you if it's a, if it's a smaller BT, it's gonna have the S-Series. Anything over 9,000 would probably have the, um, have the B for sure. They are god-awful heavy. The 1960s versions have three knobs, but the, uh, these versions here have um, slider controls. And it's a shame because uh, Jay, James actually up in New York actually had one in the S-Series I was supposed to buy off him, but unfortunately, Act of God took it away. And it's a real shame, but hey, you know, what are you going to do? And some of these have heat pumps, some of them have a heat strip, and some of them have uh, an extra uh, set of uh, coils to run steam or hot water through them for heat. Now tell me that ain't badass.
but I believe that's only on the 1957 and 1958 models, or, or 57 through 59. I think in 1960 when they changed the chassis a little bit and put knobs in and they upgraded it, well not upgraded, actually kind of downgraded it a little bit. But when they changed the design of them and changed the way they were making them, I don't think they had the uh, option to run steam lines through them no more. So tell me that ain't badass. This one I actually probably should have put in earlier, but I couldn't let it go. This is Garrett's Weather BR. He did a very nice job in fixing it up. And like I, said, I was there with him when we pulled these out. Awesome unit. Again, you can usually tell the 1950s units by the design of them. Usually rounded instead of square. <laughs> this one's off of uh, Can Horon's Tumblr. Oh, right there. Look at that. I actually didn't notice that when I made it. Copy that address down, folks, and go to it. Trust me, it's awesome. The information and pictures there, would have, if you haven't checked it out before, will just blow you away. Amazing. And up until two weeks, uh, tomorrow it'll be two weeks since the second AC meet. Now, up till that point, we didn't know any of these to still exist. I mean, he talked to some people and say, oh, I know, I know another collector that has this or whatever. Well, that's great and all, but until it's proven, until it's shown, we cannot assume it to exist. I can tell you I have a unit from the 1920s, and, for all, and obviously, obviously that's bullshit because the window AC is going to come out until the 1930s. But that's hearsay. If it's not online, if it's not on YouTube, if it's not on Facebook, if it's not on Flickr, if, it, if there's not actual photo or video evidence of it existing and, you, and somebody having it in their possession, it does not exist. I'm sorry. So, as far as I'm concerned, I possess the oldest AC unit, and we're going to get to that. Actually, it should be KB's, but he passed it on to me, which I am very grateful for. Anyway, I'm not going to, dude, I'm not going to call you out by name because I know you're not into Facebook. I know you're not being, into being publicized, but if you're watching this video and you want to comment, feel free. It was awesome meeting you, by the way. But this dude that showed up to the uh, to Mike's AC meet the second time, the one that me and KB were at, he has one of these freaking Vornados. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, no shit. I'm like, finally, somebody has one. I said, please bring it to the next meet. Mike, so I'm not going to call you out by name because I know you don't have Facebook and none of that, but... If, you're, if for some reason you see this and want to comment, and I'm also looking forward to seeing installed pictures of that uh, Fetters weather wheel that you got too. There's the chassis. Now the back, I tried to get one, like try to find an installed view. The Varnados are just bare condensers on the back. The Hot Point and Westinghouse versions, however, the bare condensers go to about three quarters of the way over and then have a... Um, <sighs> Like a, like a set of louvers, kind of like the quiet heats do. Now that could be true for the Vernados too. I think it might depend on the chassis size, like the BTU. I think maybe the smaller BTUs, the condensers don't go all the way across, and they'll have just one set of louvers on the, on the rear view over here on that side. And then the uh, maybe the larger BTU versions, just the condenser goes all the way across and all it has is side louvers. Either way, that thing's freaking cool. That's on the top of my want list too, honestly, but heh, don't we all want one of those? And they're, I believe, early 1950s, like 52, 53, somewhere in there. I've never seen one. Uh, the Mathis, 1956 Mathis. This is a very touchy subject for me because there was one of these in downtown Pottsville up until about 2014. I think 2014 is when the building collapsed. Now, I left countless notes. I looked it up on, uh, on the parcel locator to find this guy. And I got a hold of him. He did not want to sell this unit. I'm like, all right. He's like, well, what? He's like, I'm planning on restoring the building and making it a storefront. And that unit still works, and I want to use it. So I changed my attitude. I'm like, all right, man. No problem. I totally understand it. Uh, I'll leave you alone. I just, I'm not, I am going to come in and see it, though, when you got your store you know, set back up and the building fixed up. Well, I guess the building had more structural problems than he thought. And I honestly don't know what grill it had on. It might have been this one. There's like multiple different color grills. And I'll show you another set too. This is off of Ken Haran's Tumblr page. Now the photo of the outside of the unit I took. Now the ironic thing about this 1956 Mathis unit is the fact that 
it shouldn't have even been in Pennsylvania to begin with because these were only sold on the southwestern side of the United States. So between California and Texas it should really be the only places that you're going to find these. Now how the hell this got in Pennsylvania, that's what Ken Horan said is beyond him. Now quite possibly um, we got some store up here around this way got overstocked and they installed it or possibly somebody moved from down south up to Pennsylvania and took this unit with them. But either way, it's kind of, I was very upset when this, when that happened, the building collapsed and this unit got destroyed. I was not happy at all. It's actually pretty uh, bent out of shape about it. And these are, these are made of real wood. Real wood. That is awesome, man. Little Mathis logo right down here. And wait till you see the outside of it. You guys haven't seen my Flickr page or maybe you weren't following me back then. Dude, the thing's badass. Condenser cool is all aluminum louvers wrapped around that side. Bare condenser cool here, obviously. The, alu the aluminum louvers pick back up and wrap around to the other side again. The 1955 model. I believe looks the same on the inside, but the aluminum louvers go all the way around covering the condenser coil. Ken Horan actually has a, has a picture of one on his page. I don't want to take all of his pictures because I want you guys to go to his page and check it out for yourself. Look at that. Awesome looking, ain't it? You can see, as you can see, the chassis is very, very deep. I wish I had actual chassis photos of it. I have no idea what kind of compressor it had double fan motor, single fan motor, I don't know. I always liked how there's an exhaust fan mounted here too. I always admired their mounting system, how they hooked it up. And if you look here, something plugs in right here. That's a, that's a light outlet with a screw-in socket. So I wonder if they didn't have the air conditioner plugged into that and uh, ran it off of the switch. Because that might be a 110 model, depending on the BT. I don't know. Never will know. The whole building collapsed with that unit in there. And then it was taken away by a builder. Before I, I tried to look around and see if I can salvage anything. There is nothing left of it. And this one, of course, we're at the end of the 1950s in an older slide. The 1948 Philco York, which I am still obviously in possession of. That's the whole thing. Now, Dave actually knows of one of these in uh, Slatington, PA. I'm hoping. Uh, try to make a move on it. Not, I might have to. Not that I want another one, but I would take it to save it. Notice the uh, massive freaking York compressor. Most of Philco units of that era, that's what they would have in them. It's huge. It's huge. The thing weighs, probably, I bet you this unit weighs every bit of 300 pounds, if not over. It's actually sitting right there to the uh, left of me right now. And here it is in its natural location before KB rescued it. Now unfortunately the picture quality, this is from Google Street View, I think Ken Horan actually managed to, you know, capture it, but that's where it was before before uh, KB rescued it out of the honey hole, so to speak. That's what he calls it. He also had pulled a couple uh, 1950s uh, GM Frigidaires out of there, too. A couple uh, Huskies and a fancy carrier. One of those carriers has a knobs on the bottom, like uh, on the bottom corner, like a kind of like a radio would. Yeah, that one. And now, this unit here honestly come as no surprise to you. Um, basically, I'm pretty sure everyone's expecting it. I'm sure most of you guys could have called what number one would have been before I even started this video. You guys probably could, most of you guys probably could have predicted number one just by reading the headline without even clicking on it. It is the GE Carry Cool. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I threw that in there for laughs. Honestly, you guys should have been able to able to see this coming. It's the freaking weather wheel. Everybody wants a weather wheel, and for good reason. Look at it. It's freaking awesome. They are hands down the most reliable. Um, no matter what one you get, it's nice looking. The chassis design is awesome. 
the reliability is amazing, the design, the looks, everything about it is a 10 out of 10, maybe even an 11 out of 10. And there's so many different sizes, different BTUs for every application, different, every kind of voltage you can think of. They utilize almost every freaking compressor of that era that you can think of too. Pancakes, S-Series, for the 1957 models, they have, some of them had the S-Series, which I'll show you a picture of one. Uh, B-Series, AJ, Pancake, you name it, it's in there. The compressor existed between 1957 and 1974. Uh, all Tecumseh, by the way. Any Tecumseh compressor, they, they utilized it, guaranteed. Look at that. This is actually the one in my bedroom. My, this is my first restoration. I just put one of the uh, put a uh, a mid to late '60s era grill on there because it, because it baffles the sound a little bit better. Most of them run quiet. Some of them actually make some noise. I actually found that the deeper chassis units are the quiet ones. Ironically enough, you've been listening to a Fetter's Weather Wheel run the whole entire time this video has been on because I'm standing in front of it trying to keep myself cool while I'm out in my garage filming this. The outside, sitting with the, uh, the shield. Notice uh, this one unit also has the uh, Tecumseh AU pancake compressor in it. Metal mesh. Really, it's no wonder that this unit, uh, the Fetters Weather Wheel series, is the most sought after unit amongst collectors. Even people that don't collect air conditioners, some of them want a Fetters Weather Wheel. And they're the most distinct units ever. People remember them. If you've seen one, you don't ever forget seeing that. It's like, wow. Young people have seen one when they were a kid, even older people that were around back in the day. Remember sitting that, that didn't give a rat's ass about air conditioning. You say, hey man, have you ever seen one of these before? Oh yeah, tons of them. Oh, this is a holy grail. The six push button, metal mesh, climate timer. I know where you can get one for a thousand bucks. One of these days I might actually go after that. Complete with the window kit and everything. Basically, I got this off of, a, like, it was like a Tumblr page or something. This is installed in a church somewhere. I'm not really sure where. I think it was down south in, like, Texas, somewhere down there, Alabama. One of the southern states it was in. We've all seen this one before. With the shoe, that's a uh, large, that's a deep chassis. Very quiet. You're actually listening to that unit run right now. Hear it? Let's turn it on high for you. Doesn't really make much noise. But yeah, that's what you're hearing right now. And obviously, the unit that we all know and love was born in 1957. And they still use the Weather Bureau uh, slogan for a while with these. I just got notice the egg rate design. Now some of these, I think the 1959 model had a round target for the uh, grip, but still had the egg rate. I think the 1959 model had the uh, six push buttons with sliders, and the 1957 and 1958 models had four push buttons and three sliders. There's actually one of these on Gun Road in the Golden Ridge section of Levittown. It was taken out probably in like 2006, 2007. It used to hang out right behind the power lines. And I remember I, I, my chain, I was taking a bike ride from my old neighborhood to one day. And uh, my chain popped off. And I'm fixing it. And, the, and now for some reason I happened to look in. I don't really know why. But I saw it back there. It's this, this exact thing. And I, I, drove, I went, of course the house backed up to the power lines. So I went back to see if I can look at it. And there it was. Four rear sets of louvers. This one had two side vents though, on the one side and uh, one side vent on the other. I couldn't get too, too close to it because I didn't want to go in the guy's yard, but it was awesome. No, uh, no Fenders logo, just four sets of louvers on the back. That's my 1957 when I was restoring it. 
that has a B series. Now remember the 1957 model is a smaller chassis. Some of them, if not all of them, have the S series. I can't say for 1958, but I know for sure 1957. I'm assuming the unit that I know of is a 1957, possibly a 1958 model. It has to be, because I'm pretty sure I, I thought 56 was the last year for the S, but maybe 57 was. Ken Horan, maybe you know. Anyway, there's everything with it. That's the 1957 taken apart. Notice the uh, metal fetter shield on the back. Uh, four, four sets of push buttons. I zoomed out too far. Zoomed in too far. It's a unique early 60s version. Now notice with this one, this is actually on Facebook Marketplace in uh, Nebraska of all places. We're gonna zoom in a little bit here, a lot actually. Notice the uh, the grip for the wheel. All it has is a little tab sticking out that you go. You can go like that. It has uh, six push buttons as usual. But if you look at the knobs, they, I call it the compass because they're round. They're just round with a it looks like a target, like a cross. Neat looking. And notice the uh, Fetters logo right down here. It's embossed into the grill. It's pretty neat. Ah, check this out. This is awesome. This is KB's unit. And if you got, if you've made it out to the uh, second annual AC Meet Part Two in uh, North Jersey two weeks ago, you saw it in person. If not, I'm sure most of you guys follow KB too. I'm sure you guys saw it in the uh, in his videos. Yeah, you can actually see. Now, granted, notice that the late 60s models have five non-colored push buttons. And this one has the uh, plastic F badge. Look at that. We couldn't run it because it runs on 208. We need to get a transformer to try it. I think we could have got away with it, but KB, and I don't blame him. I really don't. He didn't really want to risk firing it up. This actually has the uh, adjustable louvers, as you can see. If you look at the if you look at the wheel; it has the two little arrows. Those move in and move out to actually move the uh, louvers up or down. That way, you have more control over the direction of the air. My 14K right in front of me actually has that too. Notice the uh, F logo instead of the shield. Ah, here it is. This is a 1957 model, or maybe 58, located in Levittown, PA, my hometown, right by the Acme there. On, uh, right between New Falls and Mill Creek Road. Right by the right, Abe. Look at that. A regular weather wheel with the S-Series compressor. It's in rough shape, but I want it anyway. I'd like to try to fix it. There's also one in Leesport, PA, right off Route 61 in Berks County. Hey, look at it. Awesome, ain't it? I think I have a picture of this unit too. Before they fix, they did some work to try to fix it up. Because before that, it was a lot way worse. You can see pictures on my um, on the Facebook group and on Flickr of it from years ago. This is my 1961 that I bought off uh, Gary. Notice it has. This is during the restoration process before I had it all back together yet. But notice the. Uh, comes to AU pancake compressor. And that right there is, uh, that's my favorite weather wheel grill. I think mostly just because that's the first one I've ever seen. When I think of a, uh, when, I, when I saw my first weather wheel, this is what I saw and that's what I always remembered it as. And it did have the one I had in my hotel room, was our motel room in Wildwood, New Jersey, back in the 90s. Me and my dad went down for the weekend to see a car show. And we stayed in this uh, motel room for the night that had one of these in it. I remember it had two knobs and five push buttons. And they were the, uh, they were the white ones, just the regular beige white push buttons. Notice the uh, Fetters shield. Now, before we, uh, call, before we call this complete quits, I'll show you the uh, logos here. 
hopefully it tunes in okay. I can't really see for sure, does it? Maybe, yeah, looks like it's fine. That's the metal shield. See how it clips on, pretty neat. Then, and uh, that was from 1957 till around 1963. 1964 through I think 67 would have had this, the plastic shield. And these just clip on, they don't clip on, they screw on in the back. So if you ever want to jack one of these, all you gotta do is freaking pull the uh, rear grill off or reach up and grab with a screwdriver. The chassis is already out of it. And this is the same way. This was 1967 through the end of them. These, I think these went up to like 1979, then I think in 1980. Now we're not talking about the weather wheel now, we're talking about fetters in general. The weather wheel ended in 1974, I believe. With the exception of the, apart the through the wall apart replacement chassis style, these were made up until 2008. They're just gonna have whatever sticker they felt like putting on them at the time. But yeah, that's the F badge, the Fetters F badge. That uh, no, metal one is actually from my 1957 when I finally get around to finishing the case on it. Again, if you guys actually made it this far, well, let me know if you did. Um, I don't know how many of you guys are actually going to sit here and want to watch me listen to me ramble on for an, almost an hour. But uh, yeah, here we are. I said, I really do hope you enjoyed it. It took me a long time to make. If not, click the exit presentation. I think we're done. But yeah, it took me forever to make that. How many slides did he have? And I went through every single one of them, too. Look how long the 1950s era section is. <laughs> That's crazy. Yep, 97 slides long. So yeah, um, I would love to hear your feedback on this. Was there anything that you thought I missed? Do you agree with the list? Do you think I put something on there that uh, that you feel like you disagree with that maybe shouldn't have been on there? Um, like I said, definitely, by all means, let me know what you think. And uh, I'm definitely looking forward to your feedback it's actually at 406 p.m. so I'm gonna start uploading this and hopefully this video is done uploaded by the time I go to work so I can I'm sure I'm sure this will keep some of you guys busy for a little bit anyway guys as always thank you for watching and this is definitely by far my uh, by a good bit the uh, longest video I've ever put out I don't know how long it's gonna take to upload but We'll get it. And again, if you did happen to freaking make it to the end, thank you. I don't expect you to. I expect most people to be clicking, you know, you know, clicking here, clicking there, trying to find just to, just to get the uh, freaking see what the top five are, and that's it. But like I said, for those of you who actually cared enough to, you know, actually watch this and get all the way through it, I do greatly appreciate it. And like I said, here's 2021. I think I think it was 20. 2012 or 2013 when I started my YouTube channel, so we're going <laughs> we're going on a uh, pretty good stretch here, almost a 10 years. So for those of you who have been following me this whole entire time, um, thank you for for your support by all means. Thank you for all the comments, you know, all the views. You know, for those of you who subscribe to me, you do not have to do that. But for those of you who actually enjoy my content enough to actually subscribe to me, thank you. Uh, I remember back up until about, when did I start my flicker, 2008, 2009, maybe 2007 at the absolute earliest. Um, I thought I was the only one, I thought I was the only one. And then freaking uh, AC fan and KB came around right, around right at the same time out of the woodwork. And then uh, Ken Horan out in freaking Hollywood and Universal. He came out with like a, like a plethora of information and made that Tumblr page. Amazing, I mean, 
amazing stuff. Like I said, definitely check it out. And all those people that I quoted the whole entire uh, throughout the uh, presentation, thank you too. Like I said, without you guys, I'd still be the only guy out there, you know, putting pictures and videos up for ghosts. <laughs> I put that video, I put that video of the GE up, for not really as a joke, but just for more or less for shits and giggles at the time. I didn't really think anybody would have any interest, you know, this whatsoever. Um, though I must say, I'm really glad I was wrong. Really glad I was wrong. Uh, here we are, um, almost at 900 subscribers. Uh, I brought to my attention that some of my videos have ads on there, which shouldn't be because I am not, my channel is not monetized. But I don't know. If I already have ads on, there, I was never. Gonna, I never really planned on monetizing my videos, but being that they're already putting ads on there, I guess I may as well, huh? Either way, guys, thank you so much for watching. And thank you for everything over the years let me know what you think of this video like i said agree disagree did i miss something did i have something on there that shouldn't have been there did you appreciate my ge carry cool joke for number one <laughs> i thought it was pretty good i should have made i was actually going to make a slide for it but i didn't want anyone to you know rage rage quit and click out of the video just because of that i had to throw that in there as a joke though anyway guys i made it this time peace out please 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 let me know what you think thank you all